Don't worry. Soon you will give me a brother. Before Deborah could respond, Ethan placed his small hands on her tummy, closed his eyes and said a heartfelt prayer. Dear God, please give my mommy a brother for me. As he spoke, Queen Deborah felt a chill wash over her, as if something profound was shifting inside her. Once upon a time, in the prosperous and bustling Azulu kingdom, King Charles reigned with wisdom and benevolence. His leadership was admired far and wide, but it was his love for Queen Deborah that captivated the hearts of his people. Deborah, a woman of striking beauty and kindness, found favor in the eyes of King Charles the moment they met. Their love blossomed quickly, and soon they were married in a grand ceremony that the entire kingdom celebrated with great joy. King Charles and Queen Deborah we are inseparable. The king doesn't mind pursuing state matters just to spend time with his beloved wife. Queen Deborah and King Charles had no children. They longed for a child to complete their family and secure the lineage of the royal house. But their hopes remained unfulfilled. As the years went by and the absence of a child began to weigh heavily on the house of King Charles, they prayed fervently to the gods. Queen Deborah often cried herself to sleep, her tears soaking the pillows of her grand bed. King Charles too was affected, feeling powerless in the face of their shared grief. He wished he could do more to ease her pain. Advisors and the king's cabinet whispered among themselves, speculating about the future of the kingdom without an heir. Despite these concerns, King Charles and Queen Deborah remained devoted to each other, finding solace in their shared love and hope for a miracle. After many years of hoping and praying, a glimmer of hope appeared in the form of a renowned fertility specialist named Dr. Ken, known far and wide for his expertise in matters of women and fertility. He was summoned from a distant kingdom. His reputation preceded him, and the royal couple pinned their last hope on his abilities. Dr. Ken arrived in Azulu Kingdom with great fanfare. He was a wise and learned man, having helped countless women conceive where all others had failed. He was given a warm welcome and escorted to the palace, where he met with King Charles and Queen Deborah in private. The specialist conducted a thorough examination of the queen, I reviewed all the previous attempts to conceive. After several days of tests and observations, he delivered the news that shattered the royal couple's heart. I'm sorry, your highness, but Queen Deborah would never be able to bear a child. The diagnosis was final, and no treatment or prayer could change it. The revelation left King Charles and Queen Deborah in shock and despair. Dr. Ken, though empathetic, suggested that adoption might be their only chance at having a child. At first, the idea seemed overwhelming. The thought of raising a child who was not of their bloodline was difficult for the royal couple to accept. They took time to contemplate. As days turned into weeks, King Charles and Queen Deborah weighed their options. They sought counsel from trusted advisors and friends who encouraged them to consider the possibility of adoption. Slowly, the idea began to take root in their hearts. They realized that the love they had to give was boundless, and that a child, regardless of blood, would be a blessing. With renewed hope, they began the process of adoption. The procedures were lengthy and rigorous, involving numerous checks and formalities, but King Charles and Queen Deborah remained steadfast determined to welcome a child into their lives and hearts. After months of waiting, the day finally arrived. A handsome baby boy was presented to the royal couple. The moment they laid eyes on him, they felt an overwhelming surge of love and joy. This child, who had been abandoned and orphaned, now had a family and a home. They named him Prince Ethan, a name that symbolized strength and renewal. The kingdom rejoiced alongside their king and queen, 
celebrating the arrival of the new prince with grand festivities. For the first time in years, the palace was filled with laughter and happiness. King Charles and Queen Deborah poured all their love into Prince Ethan. They cherished every moment with him, watching him grow and thrive under their care. As Prince Ethan grew, his cheerful spirit and curious nature endeared him to everyone in the Azulu kingdom. By the time he was six years old, his boundless energy and imagination were evident. He spent his days exploring the palace gardens, playing with his toys and learning from his tutors. However, as he grew older, he began to feel a longing that his toil and tutors could not fulfill. He craved the companionship of a sibling, someone to share his adventures and laughter with. One day, as he was playing in the royal gardens, Ethan approached his mother, Queen Deborah, with a question that had been on his mind for some time. Mother, he said, looking up at her with his innocent eyes, why don't I have a brother or a sister? I want someone to play with me. Queen Deborah's heart ached at his words. She had always known this day would come, but she wasn't prepared for it. Taking a deep breath, she said, Ethan, my sweet boy, I am so sorry, but I cannot give you a brother or a sister because of a health issue. Ethan's face fell for a moment, but then he shook his head vigorously. No, mommy, he said with determination. Don't worry, soon you will give me a brother. Before Deborah could respond, Ethan placed his small hands on her tummy closed his eyes and said a heartfelt prayer. Dear God, please give my mommy a brother for me. As he spoke, Queen Deborah felt a chill wash over her, as if something profound was shifting inside her. Tears filled her eyes and she whispered, Amen. Ethan opened his eyes, gave his mother a confident smile and then returned to his toys. Queen Deborah remained there, feeling a mix of bewilderment and shock at the events that had just taken place. Months later, following Ethan's prayer, Queen Deborah couldn't shake the feeling that something had changed within her. She felt a renewed sense of energy and vitality that she hadn't felt in years. Her initial shock gave way to curiosity, and she found herself hoping despite the diagnosis she had received years ago. As time passed, Queen Deborah noticed subtle changes in her body, initially dismissing them as wishful thinking. She soon realized that something miraculous might be happening. With a mix of excitement and trepidation, she shared her suspicions with King Charles. King Charles, ever the supportive husband, encouraged her to seek a medical examination. The palace physician conducted a thorough checkup. After a series of tests, he confirmed that Queen Deborah was indeed pregnant. The news spread quickly through the palace and the entire kingdom rejoiced. It was seen as a divine blessing, an answer to the prayers of a young prince. King Charles and Queen Deborah were overwhelmed with joy and gratitude, their hearts filled with renewed hope and anticipation. Months later, the palace was filled with excitement as the time for the baby's arrival approached. On a cool evening, Queen Deborah went into labor. They welcomed a healthy baby boy into the world. They named him Prince Nathaniel, which means gift of God, a name that perfectly captured the miracle of his birth. Prince Ethan was overjoyed to meet his baby brother. He held his hand with gentle love and care. The bond between the two brothers was immediate and profound, and the royal family felt complete. However, as years passed, Queen Deborah, once overwhelmed with joy, started experiencing a subtle yet persistent feeling of withdrawal where Prince Ethan was concerned. She found herself giving more attention to Prince Nathaniel, and an inner conflict began to take root in her heart. One evening, King Charles and Queen Deborah sat together in a royal chamber. Queen Deborah gently spoke to King Charles. My love, I think we need to be mindful of how we distribute our affection 
between Ethan and Nathaniel. Nathaniel is our biological son, and we should ensure he feels our love and attention. King Charles looked at her, bewildered. How can you even suggest such a thing, my queen? Ethan is our first son. He may not be of our blood, but he's of our heart. I love both of our sons very much and equally. Queen Deborah signed, feeling the weight of her words and the emotions behind them. I know you love them both, but sometimes I worry. I worry that your love for Ethan might overshadow Nathanael's place as our own flesh and blood. Woman, Ethan remains our first son. He brought us joy and hope where we needed it most. Our love for Nathaniel does not diminish our love for Ethan. They are both our children and we will love and cherish them equally. King Charles' love for Ethan and his declaration that Ethan would remain the heir to the throne only fueled her resentment. She felt an intense growing hatred that she could no longer suppress. One night, after a particularly heated argument with King Charles, Queen Deborah made a deadly decision. In the dark of night, she slipped out of the palace and headed to the local market. Disguised in a simple clock, Deborah navigated the bustling market street, her heart pounding with a mix of fear and determination. She found herself at a small inconspicuous stall run by an old woman, known for her potions and remedies. Queen Deborah approached her with a trembling voice, asking for a poison that could end a life discreetly. The old woman handed her a small portion of dark liquid. This is powerful and dangerous, the old woman warned. Use it wisely. Deborah nodded, her hands shaking as she handed over the payment and took the portion. Returning to the palace, Queen Deborah's mind raced with thoughts of her plan. She knew what she was about to do was unforgivable, but she convinced herself it was necessary to secure Nathaniel's future. As the royal maiden finished serving the meal at the dining table and left, Queen Deborah, who had been hiding in the shadows, slipped into the dining room. Her heart pounded as she poured the poisonous liquid into Ethan's plate. She took a deep breath, stilling herself for what was to come. Just as King Charles and Queen Deborah was about to sit down and eat, a call from the palace chambers drew their attention. King Charles and Queen Deborah left, leaving their plates untouched. Minutes later, the two princes came down from their room, ready to enjoy their meal. Prince Nathaniel, upon seeing this scrumptious piece of meat on Ethan's plate, begged for it. Please, brother, may I have your meat? It looks so delicious, he pleaded. Ethan, always generous and loving, smiled and handed his plate to Nathaniel without a second thought. Of course, brother, enjoy. Nathaniel collected Ethan's plate and began to eat with happiness. Minutes later, he started to vomit profusely. His small body convulsed and his face turned pale. The maidens rushed to his side, but before they could do anything, Nathaniel collapsed. Panic ensued as the news of the young prince passing out spread to the palace. King Charles and Queen Deborah rushed to the scene. As Queen Deborah approached and saw Nathaniel's lifeless form on the floor, her heart shattered. She fell to her knees beside him, her wails echoing through the halls. No, this can't be right. Not my son, not Nathaniel, she screamed. King Charles, bewildered and heartbroken, tried to console her, but his own pain was too great. What happened, he demanded of the maidens, his voice shaking. How did this happen? The maidens, equally shocked, explained that Prince Nathaniel had suddenly started vomiting after eating from Ethan's plate. Realization dawned on Deborah. Her plan to eliminate Ethan had backfired disastrously, and she had unknowingly poisoned her own son. As the palace physician rushed to attend to Nathaniel, Queen Deborah's cry grew louder. This is all my fault, she sobbed. I did this. I poisoned the food meant for Ethan, but Nathaniel ate it instead. King Charles stared at her. 
Disbelief and rage wearing in his eyes. What are you saying, Deborah? He asked, his voice cold and trembling. You tried to kill our son? Queen Deborah nodded, her tears flowing freely. I was consumed by hatred, Charles. I couldn't stand the thought of Ethan being the heir. I thought, I thought I was securing Nathaniel's future, but I've destroyed everything. King Charles' face hardened with anger. You have destroyed our family. How could you do this? The palace gas. Upon hearing the queen's confession, moves to take her away. But King Charles held up his hand. No, she will face the full consequences of her actions. But first, we must save Nathaniel. The physician walked tirelessly. Their faces grim as they tried to counteract the poison. Hours passed, each one feeling like an eternity. Queen Deborah was confined to her chambers. Her cries of regret and sorrow echoing through the palace. Finally, just as hope seemed lost, the chief physician emerged with news. Prince Nathaniel is stable, he announced. We managed to neutralize the poison, but he will need time to recover fully. Relief washed over King Charles, but his heart remained heavy. He knew that the peace and joy their family once knew could never be restored. Deborah's betrayer had left an indelible mark on their lives. Queen Deborah was brought before a council of elders, her fate to be decided by the kingdom she had once served. The people of Azulu were shocked and angered by her actions, unable to comprehend how their beloved queen could commit such a heinous act. The council deliberated for hours, Weighing the gravity of Deborah's betrayal against her years of service and the circumstances that had led to this dark path. In the end, they decided that she would be stripped of her title and exiled from the kingdom. As Deborah was led away, she turned to King Charles one last time. You will regret this, she whispered, her voice filled with malice. King Charles' expression was a mixture of sadness and resolve. Actions have consequences. I will protect our sons and ensure they grow up, knowing the true meaning of love and acceptance. With Queen Deborah's exile, the royal family faced the daunting task of healing and moving forward. Prince Nathaniel's recovery was slow, but his strength and resilience shone through. Ethan, despite the tragedy, remained a beacon of hope and love, his bond with Nathaniel growing stronger. King Charles dedicated himself to his sons, ensuring they received the love and guidance they needed. He taught them the importance of compassion, forgiveness and the value of family. The kingdom of Azulu, though shaken by the event, rallied around their king and princes, offering their support and love. Years passed, and the royal family continued to thrive. Prince Ethan and Prince Nathaniel grew into wise and compassionate leaders, their bond unbreakable. On the much anticipated day of Prince Ethan's naming as the heir apparent to the throne, the palace was bustling with excitement, dignitaries from neighboring kingdoms, elders and the people of Azulu gathered to witness the momentous occasion. The atmosphere was filled with joy and celebration as everyone awaited Ethan's appearance. King Charles sat proudly, ready to officially declare Prince Ethan as his successor. However, as the minutes ticked by, there was no sign of the young prince. Concern creased the king's brew, and he motioned for the guards to fetch Prince Ethan from his chambers. The guards knocked on Prince Ethan's door, but there was no response. With mounting urgency, they forced the door open, only to be met with a chilling sight. Ethan lay on the floor, pale and cold. The room fell silent as the guards rushed to his side, their faces edged with horror. Hmm. What happened to Prince Ethan? What will be the fate of the Azulu kingdom? Will Deborah ever allow Ethan to be crowned as the heir apparent to the throne? Leave continue in the comment section and I will see you in the next saga. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do. 
like and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss out on any of our amazing stories bye <laughs>